Another award winner by Fisher Flying Products is the Dakota Hawk, a powerful and affordable two-seater. The Dakota Hawk features folding wings, which allow for a simple yet secure locking mechanism and convenient and efficient storage. Setup or takedown is a seven to 10 minute process. Properly equipped, the Dakota Hawk will cruise at over 95 miles per hour and is the perfect choice for cross country flight. Hello everyone and welcome to The Nest. This week, I'm going to be reviewing a report that I put together that is a result of testing that I performed on various species of woods that compete with Sitka spruce for use in aircraft structures. Sitka spruce has become more and more difficult to find. It's becoming more increasingly expensive when we do find it and a fairly high risk uh, when we buy large boards because um, of hidden pitch pockets and things like this. And so I have been looking for a while uh, for an alternative wood to use in the areas where we use Sitka in our designs. And I wanted to do a proper testing and report based on uh, accepted methods and utilizing all of the tools that I have available to determine definitively whether or not uh, another species of wood can be used in place of Sitka because um, we want to keep our, our kits going out to people. We want to keep the costs under control. And um, when you're looking at uh, something that's three to four times the price of, of an alternative wood that's available locally, um, we really have to keep an, an, an open mind to being able to utilize a different wood as long as it's tested properly. So uh, I'm, I'm drawing on a report that was put together by, by Bob Haynes. I've mentioned that in previous videos. Um, he indicated that he had wished that he had tested Douglas fir. So that's one of the woods that I'm testing uh, against Sitka spruce, um, the yellow poplar, which is another wood that I heard was uh, listed and a good alternative. And as well, we are going to be testing um, uh, white pine. So without further ado, I want to get into it. Uh, I've got video of my testing procedure. I go through um, the basic gist of how I do it. And then I sort of, you know, I did 30 some odd tests or 24 tests. So it, I, I sped everything up. And um, when we get to the, the end of it, we'll talk a little bit more. So um, here's the here's the report that I put together. I'm going to read it out for you, and uh, hopefully you guys get some some good um, some good information from it. I want to begin by giving a lot of credit to Bob Haynes, who put me on to this testing method and who provided much of the information about alternative wood species that could be substituted for the venerable but almost unobtainable Sitka spruce. I'm going to be regurgitating a lot of what he put into his article back in 2000. We have talked on the phone about this problem as I wanted to let him know that I wanted to use some of his methods to recreate the testing. The reason I'm recreating this testing now is because I'm finding it more and more difficult to obtain quality Sitka spruce for the production of our aircraft kits. As well, the cost has become prohibitive. As of late, it's been going up and up. This is simply because the wood is now protected and the only wood available for production is wood that falls in the forest. These few trees get bit upon by multiple sawmills and are sought after all over the world, especially by Japanese furniture producers and high-end millworks for houses. It has become very difficult to procure the Sitka spruce in this environment and still make a low-cost kit. Bob and I discussed the species that he tested and that he regretted not having tested Douglas fir. So I went out and found some specimens of Douglas fir, yellow poplar, and northern white pine, which we use currently to produce all the other kit components for our kits. I feel that based on Bob's testing, there was a good likelihood that we would be able to substitute northern white pine into areas where Sitka spruce is currently used. The substitution of a heavier wood in these areas will not see a large weight penalty in the overall weight of the aircraft 
and therefore we see it as a great opportunity to secure supply and reduce costs as long as the strength is there as tested. My opinion concurs with Bob that although Sitka spruce is or was a wonderful wood to use based on its low specific density and high strength, it is not the only wood species available with the strength needed for aircraft construction. There aren't very many wooden aircraft kits built these days. I can count on one hand how many kit suppliers supply wooden aircraft kits to the world. Most kit manufacturers these days are producing kits from composites or sheet aluminum. This doesn't mean that the wooden aircraft kit is an unpopular option in people's consideration of what kit they want to buy. There are many individuals who are much more comfortable working with wood than the other two mediums. The problem is, is that there's a lack of information available about alternatives to Sitka, which seems to be embedded in everyone's psyche. So I decided that I wanted to be very sure about the change in species that I've been considering for Fisher's Fisher Flying Products designs. Bob has done a lot of the legwork ahead of me in designing the testing methodology, but I had to see for myself the concrete results. In Bob's testing, he used test coupons from four different species. Sitka spruce as the standard, with the contenders being yellow poplar, northern white pine, and ponderosa pine. Recreating this test, I utilized northern white pine, Sitka spruce, yellow poplar, and Douglas fir, which was the species Bob wished he had tested. I believe that these four challenger species present the best availability and economic alternatives to Sitka spruce. To begin, let's talk about price. I found northern white pine at approximately $4 per board foot, yellow poplar at approximately $4.50 per board foot, and Douglas fir at approximately $6 per board foot, these all being in Canadian dollars. This compares to my current supply price of $18.75 per board foot for Sitka spruce, which I have to have trucked from the west coast to central Canada in Ontario. Bob used test coupons 3 8 by 3 8 by 13 inches in length. In my testing, I wanted to use larger test coupons that better reflected the size I use in construction of our kits. I use half by half by 24 in length. The cross section of solid wood in our longerons is half by half. And when you take into consideration the 1 8 inch grooves cut into the 3 quarter by 3 quarter profile, my coupon test failure weights compared to, to Bob's are higher as a result of the larger cross section. The methodology. Using the same method as Bob's experiment, I used a weighted bucket hanging on the coupon as it spanned across a gap. I determined ahead of time a safe weight at which to begin each test. This safe weight turned out to be a little bit too high for the Sitka spruce coupons. Two of these coupons broke instantly at the base weight of 40 pounds. The bucket I used was pre-weighted with gravel and a waterproof liner was installed in the top of the bucket to allow me to add water incrementally until the coupon broke. I set up boards under the bucket to break the fall of the bucket with, the little tr with as little travel as possible so we could keep the water in the bucket under control. I broke the test down into three coupons for each species oriented with vertical grain and three coupons oriented with the horizontal grain to provide a contrast in the results. This resulted in the doubling of tests compared to Bob's testing. We have had many people ask us which way the grain should be oriented for the spar caps. The information that I received from this test showed me that there was a slight percentage difference based on the orientation of the grain, but I found this through all the species, which is interesting because I expected a larger deviation. All the samples had a ring count of 8 or higher, with the Sitka spruce being the highest at over 40 per inch. All the samples exhibited grain slope that was within tolerance of less than 15% over the span. All the samples were cut on the table saw, with the final table saw settings being identical for all coupons. I found that all the samples remained straight after cutting, indicating that there were no significant internal stresses in the wood. The coupon weight and density results, so each coupon was weighed to an average and then compared with a standard listing of density 
that's listed on the internet. The measured density uh, for Sitka spruce was 25.93 pounds per cubic foot. The density standard being 28 pounds per cubic foot, which was a minus 7.4 from the standard. Northern white pine measured density 24.64 pounds per cubic foot. Density standard 25 pounds per cubic foot, which means the northern white pine was below by 1.4%. Yellow poplar measured density 32.42 pounds per cubic foot and the density standard was 28 pounds per cubic foot. The yellow poplar measured 15.8% denser than the density standard listed. Douglas fir measured density 27.88 and the density standard being 30.0 that had the Douglas fir at minus 7.1% to the density standard. As I went through each of the test results, the coupons all being 0.5 by 0.5 by 24 inch over a 21 inch gap, the test results, which I have, I'll show at the end of the, the video, um, basically showed that the uh, Sitka spruce didn't perform very well at all. The northern white pine um, did very well. The yellow poplar was surprisingly strong and the Douglas fir um, was strong but had a quite a tendency to explode when it broke. So um, the failure observations, and again I'll put the result numbers at the end of the video, the failure, or failure observations were that the Douglas fir was by far the most explosive in its failure regardless of grain orientation. All the coupons broke completely and suddenly into multiple pieces over a four to six inch length. The Sitka spruce was not up to the task. It would begin to make noise as soon as the base load was applied, if it could take the load at all. It tended to break cleanly along the ring line slope, if any. The yellow poplar was the load winner and broke in vertical fashion with the fibers holding the two parts together. There was a less violent break and more of a slope to the failure curve. Northern white pine was a little less predictable. There were two failures in a distinct line with the pole weight across the grain and two failures that broke along the grain slope over a four to six inch length. So my summary, in line with the findings of Bob Haynes and some work that's been done by Tim Ketchum, the Sitka spruce showed the least strength giving identical sizing of the text coupons. This was followed by Douglas fir which came in third. Douglas fir also had the most violent failure mode where all the test coupons failed explosively into multiple pieces compared to the other species. The next best was northern white pine. It exhi exhibited high strength relative to Sitka and had a better failure mode than Douglas fir. It had a relative density that was about 11% higher than Douglas fir and 5% lighter than Sitka. Coming in first in strength in this test was the yellow poplar. It was clear winner as well in failure mode with as well as it was a winner in failure mode with three out of the four test coupons remaining joined after failure. It comes in as the heaviest option though with a relative density of full 20 percent higher than that of the Sitka spruce samples. The results lead me to concur with Bob Haynes' findings and to conclude that the best species for manufacturing of wing spar caps and longerons in the Fisher line of aircraft should be northern white pine. It, it should be noted that the test results could vary slightly should samples be procured with densities that are less deviant from the standard densities listed in the technical papers. The yellow poplar tested was a full 15% more dense than the standard, which if equal in density would make it a good choice as, as good a choice as northern white pine. The Sitka spruce was 7.4% light in density, which likely degraded its performance in testing somewhat. Here are the test results. They show clearly that Sitka spruce is not the definitive species for the construction of wooden aircraft structural components. Thanks again for watching. We try hard to bring you interesting content each week.